Let's take a look at VLC Streamer for the iPad. This is the program that lets you stream non-compatible iPad video from a PC or Macintosh to your iPad. It comes in a free and a paid for version. So after installing both the PC part of the program and putting it on your iPad, this is what you'll see. For most network setups, VLC Streamer will automatically detect the PC or Macintosh and you'll see it in the list here. For our network setup, uh, we've had to add it manually, which isn't a problem, it's just a matter of entering the computer's IP address. Once you've got your computer on the list, Watching movies is uh, just a matter of adding the film or video that you want to watch through the Add Movie button. We've already got one movie here already added. To add more, just click the Add Movie button. This brings up what is effectively a file browser which lets you browse all the drives and folders on the remote computer. One thing to be aware of with this is it seems to be disregard all security settings so no matter if you have hidden files, system files, no matter what the user settings are you will be able to browse all the files and folders and drives that are connected to the server computer. When it comes to watching films, there's really two ways of using VLC Streamer. One is to simply watch films in real time and have the server computer convert them in real time. The other way is to add films beforehand and allow the server to convert them in the background so they're then ready and already converted when you want to come to watch them. As an example, our server box is a 2.8 GHz Pentium 4, so it's really quite old. But even so, it's more than up to transcoding SD content on the fly. Uh, we tend to give it a little bit of a head start, say around 30 seconds. But once it's up and running, it handles the job perfectly well. For HD quality, you're really going to want a dual core machine, probably a, a core 2 at least. So here we'll start a film playing. It'll take a few seconds, but once it's made the connection and it spotted the films ready to go, it'll start playing. And as you can see, here you go, the video started playing already. You're able to pause it, play it. If there's enough of the film already converted, you can fast forward and rewind. If we pause this and then go back, you can see that it's actually still encoding the video on the server. And the longer you leave it, the more it's encoding until the entire thing's finished, at which point it'll start on the next one if there is one set up.